I'm Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's News Update. In our Election 2012 report today, Jewish business magnate Sheldon Adelson is suing the National Jewish Democratic Council, or NJDC, for defamation. In a suit filed Wednesday, Adelson claims the NJDC made, quote, maliciously false and defamatory statements and is seeking $60 million in compensatory and punitive damages. Adelson had sent a letter to both the NJDC and the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, or DCCC, last week, asking for a retraction of their allegations and an apology, after they had claimed that Adelson had approved of and profited from prostitution at his casino properties in Macau, China, and had called for Republicans not to take Adelson's, quote, tainted money. The Macau allegations first appeared in a wrongful termination lawsuit filed by former Adelson employee Stephen Jacobs. The DCCC did apologize to Adelson and retracted their remarks. The NJDC, however, has refused to do the same, calling Adelson's legal motion a slap suit, a strategic lawsuit against public participation, meant to obtain silence and not justice, and said, we will not be bullied into submission and we will not be silenced by power. Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz told the JTA Wednesday that he had reached out to NJDC CEO and President David Harris on Adelson's behalf and tried to show him that the allegations were untrue. Dershowitz told the JTA that Harris's refusal to apologize disqualifies him to represent Democrats or Jews, saying he is now doing more harm to Democrats and the Jewish community than good. They are willfully spreading a Lashon Hara that they know to be false, Dershowitz said, using the Hebrew term for malicious gossip. U.S. religious officials held a media briefing Thursday morning to discuss the faith community's national response to several recent acts of violence, including the deadly shooting at the Sikh House of Worship in Wisconsin, the burning of the Islamic Center of Joplin in Missouri, and the opening of the frequently attacked Islamic Center of Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Religious leaders representing Christian, Jewish, and Muslim denominations spoke about their ongoing efforts to help support those targeted groups. Among them, Imam Mohammed Magid, president of the Islamic Society of North America, Catherine Lohr, president of the National Council of the Churches of Christ in the USA, Rabbi Burton Vizotsky, director of the Milstein Center for Interreligious Dialogue at the Jewish Theological Seminary, and Rabbi David Saperstein, director of the Religious Action Center of Reform Judaism, who said, as a people who have endured persecution throughout history, Jews know all too well the dangers that stem from a failure to defend the religious freedom, safety, and well-being of others, and from a failure to speak forcefully and act effectively against discrimination and demonization of the other. The event was organized by Shoulder to Shoulder, a national campaign of interfaith, faith-based, and religious organizations dedicated to ending anti-Muslim sentiment. Duke University announced this week that they have acquired the papers of Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel, who is recognized as one of the most influential religious leaders of the 20th century. Heschel was involved with the civil rights and anti-Vietnam War movements and famously marched side by side with the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in Selma, Alabama. The collection of papers, some of which have never been available to scholars before, contain notes and drafts of nearly all of Heschel's published works, as well as correspondence with such prominent figures as Martin Buber. Eric Myers, the Bernice and Morton Lerner Professor of Religion and Director of the Duke Center for Jewish Studies, said the acquisition of the papers assures scholars that Heschel's legacy of social activism and Judaic scholarship will be central to the pursuit of Jewish studies at Duke and elsewhere. Susanna Heschel, Heschel's daughter and the Eli Black Professor of Jewish Studies at Dartmouth, said she was glad that her father's papers had found a good home at Duke. And finally, Munich 11 widow Anki Spitzer will lead a live-streamed minute of silence this Sunday in Rockland, New York, during the opening ceremonies of the JCC Maccabi Games to honor the 11 members of the Israeli Olympic team murdered in the terrorist attacks at the 1972 Munich Olympics. Spitzer recently addressed an audience in London, which included International Olympic Committee President Jacques Rogue, and said that the actions of the IOC in not holding a minute of silence at the opening ceremony at the London Games in tribute to the Munich 11 were unconscionable. 
The live streamed Minute of Silence from Rockland will take place between 8 and 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, August the 12th, during the live bro broadcast of the JCC ceremonies and can be seen at jccrockland.org slash And that's Shalom TV's news update. I'm Tisha Bader.